when I came to the campus in the fall of 1984, um, I was very fortunate to be here to build on what uh, Dr. Perkins and the four uh, fathers and mothers of this uh, campus had already accomplished. Uh, the um, community leaders ha had uh, come around and behind Penn State uh, to develop this campus in the 1970s. The, uh, the land and putting the most of the land that we have now together um, and those first four buildings were a very important foundation. I was um, fortunate in my first uh, three or four years here uh, to work with something which Dr. Perkins and those early founders of the campus had done, and that is that they had created or made an arrangement for an option uh, of um, uh, quite a few acres of land uh, across from a Broadcasting Road farm that uh, was called the Piper Farm. And um, we wanted to uh, use that land, we wanted to purchase that land and use it for the development of agricultural programming. Um, people who were uh, working uh, before I came here, people like uh, 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 Mr. Beaver, Mr. Howard O. Beaver, uh, working with uh, people at University Park, uh, did persuade the university to buy that land for the campus and to begin to develop agricultural programming. That was a key to the next phase of the development of this campus because once we had those agricultural programs approved, which were statewide programs, it meant in order to draw students here from around the state, we needed to have student housing. So by the late 1980s, folks were coming down from the University Park helping us to design that first um, phase of student housing. And by 1990, we had um, 400 beds of student housing. In order to uh, support the students who would be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We needed a whole new set of student services and we needed extra um, athletic fields. Um, we needed a new bookstore and gradually all these things began to take place. I tend to think of campus development um, as in periods of momentum. During the 1960s, there was a lot of planning that was done for the momentum that occurred in the 70s that, you, that uh, Dr. Perkins talked about. In the 1980s, after my, after my arrival, we began to do uh, the planning for a residential uh, campus and one that had uh, some new kinds of academic programming. The 1990s was another period of real, a very dynamic period in terms of campus development. A lot of momentum, the big mo, as I call it. Um, there was the uh, development with a wonderful faculty and staff that we had here of the services for that students needed who were going to be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then the academic programs that uh, a larger range of students would need. And um, those programs uh, were developed and the student numbers began to climb. During a period of the 1990s when many of the Penn State campuses were losing enrollment or have, having a, at least a, a, a kind of a, a stable enrollment, the Brooks campus grew a great deal. By the end of the 1990s, we had over 2,000 students here. 
I think that the leaders of the um, university saw this campus as one that they might like to develop in yet some uh, additional ways. We had all of the new athletic fields that were developed. Uh, we had uh, the new bookstore. We had an expansion of the of the uh, what is now called Perkins uh, Student Center uh, with a new uh, uh, food service area and new meeting rooms. Uh, we had uh, the Frank. We had our first capital campaign that was chaired by uh, Mr. Thomas Beaver uh, for the Franco building. Uh, Dr. Frank Franco gave, gave a new gift and we had a new office, a new classroom building with that. And uh, the university looked at this campus and they said uh, uh, when when uh, um, new president came on, came on, Dr. Graham Spanier, and he wanted to expand the campuses further, uh, they looked at the Brooks campus as being one that might be identified to become a new four-year college of the university. College status was yet a, another level of distinct, distinction within the university.